My name is Gracie Flores, and I am the uh, granddaughter to um, Moyam Kulakauka Pakani. Um, a lot of people know my grandfather as um, Uncle Bill. And growing up, um, you know, we would refer to Grandpa's home as um, Grandpa's or Grandpa's place. Um, as we got older, we would refer Grandpa's place to um, the bay or down the bay because my grandfather lived right there on um, Waiokawa Bay. And um, I remember growing up, um, my dad, um, Russell Pakani, and my uncle, um, my uncle Chunky is actually my dad's older brother. He would take us, me and my siblings, um, I'm the youngest of three kids and all my cousins, and um, they would take us down to grandpa's every Sunday. And I remember as a child, I remember sometimes my uncle would come and pick us up. So he would let us know, okay, we're going grandpa's and, um, you know, make sure you get all your, your clothes ready, make sure you get your towel. And he would tell us we're going early because, you know, because uncle wanted to go holo holo. So, you know, as kids, we, I remember us, you know, preparing ourselves, we have to make sure we get all our stuff ready and that we're up early so that when uncle come, um, you know, we're ready to go. And you don't want to be that person or that guy that missed the bus down to grandpa's because you're going to stay home all day bored. So, you know, as children, I remember getting ready and um, um, I remember we used to jump in the back of my dad's truck or in the back of my, um, my uncle's flatbed and all of us Kiki would jump in the back and we would um, head down to Kyokaha. And I remember right when we hit the road to going into grandpa's, it was like this, you know, feeling of, of excitement. And I remember, um, you know, just driving into grandpa's place was just like an adventure in itself, right? Just, you know, all of us in the back of the truck and going off-roading, so. I remember one of my earliest memories of grandpa is I was about four or five years old. So I was born in 1980. So um, that was back in, you know, the early 80s. And I remember my dad used to take us swimming in grandpa's pond. And I remember one day, my dad just threw me in the pond. And I guess back then, that's how you learn how to swim is when you just get thrown in. And so, um, you know, sure enough, that happened to me. My dad threw me in and um, next thing you know, boom, I was swimming. <laughs> and so um, I remember me and my siblings, we learned how to swim in, in Grandpa's Pond. I remember once I learned how to swim, uh, I didn't want to get out. Didn't want to get out. We spent hours uh, swimming in Grandpa's Pond. And I remember we would practice um, our powder. And I remember we would have powder contests with my cousins and I remember we used to take um, the empty soda can, or the, sometimes it was an empty beer can. And we would take the can and we would powder, and if the can flew outside of the pond, then supposedly it was the winner for, for doing that. And, and that's something we enjoyed, we used to um, challenge with my cousins, and, and we spent you know, hours in the pond, and you know, something about that pond, it's, it's very, very cold. And so if you spend a lot of time in the pond, um, you'll start to shiver, right? And, um, and I remember when I used to get cold, I used to run to the front by the beach, by where the sand was. And I used to lay in the sand and the sand would warm my body. And um, I just remember, you know, uh, that feeling of um, being warm and then it would get hot again. And then you would run back to the pond and jump in the pond again. And then run back and just do that all day. I also remember my, my grandfather had these big kamani trees in the front of, by the beach and um, on the sand and he would make these um, swings out of tires, like old tires, and we would swing on the swing. And I remember fighting with my cousins about who would swing next and you know, we used to swing on that swing and you know, it's just pure joy, right? When, you, when, when, when you're a child. And, I remember uh, that was one of my favorite things to do was swim and swing on that swing. Uh, so as I got older, 
um, you know, and my siblings got older, older, my cousins, we all have our own families now, we have our own kiki. And, um, you know, we continue to take our kids down. And so a lot of our older kiki, they know grandpa's place. Um, and they know who their grandfather was. Um, I even, you know, got married there um, in 2009 um, to my husband. And so it's, um, it's a very, very significant place for our ohana. Uh, lots of very, very wonderful childhood memories. Back then, I didn't realize um, that my grandfather didn't have electricity or running water. You know, I grew up in a traditional home and uh, my grandfather's home looked like mine. Um, it was beautiful. He had a two bedroom home with, it had a kitchen and a bathroom. It had a huge um, living area and it had um, these huge picture windows in the front that would overlook the bay. And I didn't realize that, um, you know, the work that he had to put in to even exist there and for us to even enjoy the place. Um, you know, he was definitely a visionary person. He was very innovative um, because he was also illiterate. He didn't uh, read or write. And so, but he still managed to, you know, take this raw piece of aina and, you know, develop it into something so beautiful. And he was also a very knowledgeable and skilled farmer. And he would have, you know, lots of fruit trees and vegetables. And, and so he would have all his plants and, um, you know, he was just flourishing and um, thriving on his aina. Um, and so because of that, because of those experiences, um, you know, it's stuff, you know, things that he instilled in us. Um, you know, still to this day, I, you know, live in that way as well. You know, I live on homestead land in Pana Elva and I live off grid and um, so does my siblings. And, you know, we wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for the experiences that we've learned um, through our grandfather growing up. And so I'm so thankful for, for him instilling that in us because, you know, we, we want to try to be more self-sufficient, you know, and practice that. and. Um, you know, live off our aina and um, especially in these times, you know, it's just better to to live in that way and be more sufficient and self-sufficient. A lot of the fond memories I have of grandpa was also when we used to do our family camping trips. Um, I remember even as a child, we um, camped at uh, Papa'i Bay and I remember, you know, anytime there was a school break, um, uh, Christmas break, spring break, Labor Day, if there was a weekend attached to, or actually a holiday attached to the weekend, most times we camping. And I remember, um, you know, being so excited, we would tell, ask my dad, you know, dad, we're going camping, you know, the, you know, spring break or whatever it is. And, we would be so excited and we would plan to go down to camp down grandpa's and we would also um you know go holo holo a lot when we camp you know we watched grandpa and my dad and uh, my uncles um you know they would throw net um you know they would catch uh you know manini a hole hole uh wo wo and um you know, I remember um, us setting net too. Um, we would set the net, you know, in the evening and then um, they would pick it up in the morning. And I remember us being so excited when, when they would pick up the net and then we were, you know, would wonder what would be in the net today. And I remember we would help get the fish out or, you know, sometimes there was lobsters in there and sometimes there was slip, slipper lobsters and, you know, 7-Eleven crabs and uhus and, I remember my uncle and my dad be like, watch out, you know, you're going to cut your, they're going to cut your finger off, you know, the 7-Eleven crabs. So we would be like all intrigued about what was in the net. My dad and my uncle diving for vana. And I remember they would put it in the basket and they would clean it and then we would help crack it open and get the meat out. And I remember that was one of grandpa's favorite things to eat was vana. I remember also that there was this, um, 
point or this, uh, we used to call it uh, Ninoe Point. And um, if you walk across the bay, there's this hill that comes into a hill and it's almost like a, look, a lookout. Um, and I remember um, my grandfather, my uncle, my dad, they would go up on top that lookout and they would look out into the bay and they would see all the schools of fish and they would study the ocean and study the current um, there. And that's where they spent some time, you know, um, observing the ocean. And if you walk further down, there's a point and that's where we would cast, where you can cast your pole. And I remember my uncle would make a mackerel um, out of, I guess, flour. He would make this mixture and it's like bait. So you use that to, to catch an inue um, and the, on that point. Um, but sometimes we didn't have bait. So we would use, um, uh, we would use a limu off the rock because that's what the inue ate. And also I remember we used to use like PPP shell and the snail inside the PPP shell. We would, you know, use that to catch, you know, hinalea or uh, popa'a. And we would cut that up and hopefully use that for bait and catch, hopefully catch something bigger. And I remember uh, my uncle Chunky, he made like this bomb neno e poke. <laughs> and I remember he used to put limukohu inside and he would put opihi and he would put um, inomona if he had it and I remember he would put onion and you know still to this day like if I eat any of those foods those flavors it just it gets I get so emotional because it takes me back to you know my memories of, of, of being there um, at my grandpa's home One of our goals as an ohana is to hopefully reclaim our place there and right now there's some conflict between ohana and you know who who has the right to be there and who doesn't and so that's why i think it's so important for us to be um a part of maha um and a part of the association um uh, because my grandfather was one of the founding members of maha so um, I think it's um, only right that we support, um, you know, um, the families um, that's been there uh, for generations and, you know, um, support their fight to, to keep their aina in their families forever. My grandfather loved a lot of people and a lot of people loved my grandfather and, um, you know, at one time he wanted to, you know, use that place as an educational place for, for Keiki and um, to learn uh, about the ocean and about the Aina. And I, you know, hopefully in the future, that's something that we can bring to life and um, in, in, in honor of his memory. Uh, you know, my grandfather, he always would tell me and tell us, um, you know, that he would say, it's yours, you know, the place, it's yours, go get him. He would always say that and he also said to us no lose them and you know i just hope that that doesn't happen um it's been about five years uh, actually march 2nd um makes five years that um, my grandfather passed away so you know i just hope that he's proud of me and my ohana and you know proud that we're still trying to fight for that place and so 